we all know that, we all know that when it comes to success right in anything you do but especially in this business when it comes to success we have a formula okay we do have a formula all right so the first part of that formula is awareness okay you being on this call is a part of awareness okay the next step to that formula is education okay so hopping on go lives hopping on trainings that's also a part of education so the fact that you're here, you're getting awareness, you're getting education, which is then going to lead to results, okay? Those results are going to lead to growth, and then you have success, okay? So what I'm going to go over here is going to be one of the tools um, used by one of the top educators on a platform, actually created by one of the top educators on a platform, Matthew Thayer, right? This is Cash Trap that we're looking at. So quick way to get here, quick, um, a, a shortcut, right in your web browser, you type in hourglass.im, go ahead and type in your username and password and it brings you right to Cash Trap, okay? This, this strategy that we're looking at is about, I wanna say 87% accurate, okay? How I know that is because I use it. <laughs> I use it as well, right? Um, I, I use this every morning. You know, I don't tap in with the educators at this point and my career is being an investor. I've been investing for two years, but I've learned this strategy and I will faithfully use this strategy to hit my daily goals, okay? Even though I will tap in with some educators, but I have learned this strategy, this 87% accurate strategy to hit my daily goals every day or every week, all right? So it's three main things that you need to know before we uh, dive deep into the actual um, strategy and the basics of the strategy, there are gonna be three things that you all are gonna need, okay? For success when applying not only this strategy, but any strategy within the platform, okay? Anything that you do within this business, you're gonna need these three things. Number one will be patience, okay? Number one will be patience, okay? Number two will be consistency, okay? That's the only way you're going to be able to compound your account is if you're consistent. First, patient, and then consistent. All right? And then number three is discipline, right? Meaning not over-leveraging, not doing something, you know, outside of the box. You want to be disciplined to the rules, you know, disciplined to what you have set for your daily goal, percentages, or whatever it may be. Okay? So top three things that you need before you even open up your computer, your phone, you need to meditate on patience, consistency, and discipline, all right? So once you have those th three uh, pillars to success locked into your brain, right, then you can dive into the strategy, right? Then you can dive into um, one of the products to go ahead and make your daily go. Now, before I trade, what I do is I do my due diligence and I look at the news. And I don't mean NBC, Fox News, I mean Forex Factory, so that you can know what's going on with the currencies, okay? Now, when you're trading on a platform on Go Live, you know, the educators, they're bringing us up. They're bringing, they're going in order. <laughs> they're telling you about patience, consistency, discipline, and then they're pulling up the news, okay? So as you can see this morning, we had red folders on GVP. Usually when we see red folders, we know it's gonna be some, something drastic or dramatic happening in the market. So usually when I see a currency with the red folder, I stay away, okay? So any pair this morning that was paired with GBP, so for example, GBP CAD, okay? GBP USD, GBP JPY, I'm staying away from those pairs, okay? But now, as you can see, we have orange folders. You know, orange folders don't necessarily mean anything bad, but those are also things that you want to look out for, you want to check the news and and um, and look out for that and be cautious of that still within that time frame. But when you see yellow news, that usually indicates that, you know, news is stable. All right, so going in later into the day, as you can see, we have all yellow folders, okay? So trading this evening, we have stable news, right? Which means that the market will move in a, uh, you know, in a consistent manner, all right? So that's the first thing you wanna do after you have meditated on those three pillars to success, you wanna check the news, okay? 
you want to check the news, maybe jot it down so that you can keep in your head, okay, which pairs or which currencies had a red folder so that I can stay away from that, okay? Because sometimes it won't be, it won't, sometimes it won't affect your trade, but in most cases it will, right? So if it's a red folder on GBP and, you know, you're looking at cash trap and it's supposed to sell and then because that red folder came in and all of a sudden it shot up or it was supposed to be going up for a buy and then because that red folder, all of a sudden it just dropped to the floor, right? That happens because of news, right? So not because the product doesn't work, it's because you want to make sure you're doing your job and hitting all of those steps to your trading plan, okay? Now, let's dig into the actual product. Let's dig into the product. All right, now on the three minute bag, they're using cash trap. <laughs> All right, on, on go live, Matthew Thayer, this is his product, right? So he created cash trap. Taylor Marks is also using cash trap, okay? And then you have a couple other educators that use cash trap. So this information that I'm giving you is just an overview of the product, but you can definitely go in to go live HFX Academy and watch the educator actually break it down as well in detail. But I'm gonna go ahead and break it down um, from the, the training that we got uh, this past weekend and just how I look at cash trap and how I maximize on profits when it comes to cash trap, okay? Now, the first confirmation is gonna be four top confirmations that you need when it comes to cash trap, all right? The number one will be the arrow, okay? Somebody tell me when we have that down arrow and it's red, what does it indicate? Oh, yeah. It's put. Yep. Indicates a put, which is a sale. Okay. Indicates a put, which is a sale. Then we have the green arrow pointing upward that indicates what family? Buy. Indicates a buy, which is a call. Correct. Okay. So that's the number one confirmation that you want to look at. All right. Now, the next thing will be support and resistance. We know. As I always explain it to this on the, uh, I explain it this way on all of the skill set calls, support and resistance is nothing but a ceiling and a floor, okay? So look at price like this. Look at these candlesticks like um, a bouncing ball hitting a ceiling and a floor um, in a room, okay? So we have our candlestick. Once it hits the floor, which is support, it has to do what? Price has to do what from there? Back up. It has to bounce up, right? Hits that floor, it has to bounce up. And then once it hits the ceiling, it has to do what? Go back down. It has to go right back down, okay? So how we look at support and resistance is a ceiling and a floor, right? And as you can see, it's very clear here. It's very clear. So as price came down and hit the bottom of the Bollinger Bands, right? Even this middle line is considered a floor. Okay, even this middle line is considered a floor. That's the middle of the market. But down here, these green lines is where the market is oversold. So when the market is oversold, it has no space but to come back up. So as you can see, price came down with these bearish candles, which are the red candles, the selling candles. And then we have the blue candles, which indicates the bullish movements in the market. So once it hit that floor, being oversold, right? Now we have to buy it back up. So these bullish candles, as you can see, are buying up from that oversold area, okay? That's support and resistance. Now, these are Bollinger Bands. The Bollinger Bands indicates support and resistance in the market, okay? The Bollinger Bands indicate support and resistance in the market. As you all know, I created uh, a quick start for cash trap that breaks down every indicator within cash trap so that you can understand that. Okay. So if right now, what I'm saying does not make sense to you. Go ahead and grab that cash trap quick start that I created, go into the back office into your academies and watch the breakdown of the videos explaining support and resistance, explaining the Bollinger Bands and so forth. Okay. So does that make sense to everybody as far as support and resistance, support and resistance, our floors and ceilings? 
okay? Now, another thing that I wanna point out when it comes to support and resistance, right? Now, for me, um, I'm just like AB. <laughs> I don't look at the, uh, the panel over here as far as my entry. I'm looking at, I'm paying attention to support and resistance before I take a trade, okay? So for me, as you can see, it does not have to all, it does not have to go all the way up to the Bollinger Bands for me. As you can see, Cash Trap, if I zoom in a little bit closer, Cash Trap has these little areas of support and resistance in the middle of the market, okay? They have these areas of support and resistance. I don't know if anyone has ever caught that, but they have these areas of support and resistance. Okay, so if you're looking, you're like, okay, I can't take this trade because it didn't hit the floor all the way. Or I can't take this trade because it didn't hit the ceiling and it, hit, it didn't hit the top of the Bollinger Bands. But if you pay attention, you see here, you know, price is not going to always shoot straight up and go to an all-time high and it's not going to always shoot straight down. It's going to consolidate in the middle. It's going to have small pullbacks no matter what trend is on. So if it's on an uptrend, it's still going to have some pullbacks. So what these support and resistance lines will do in between those movements of the uptrends and downtrends, it helps you catch those in-between movements, okay? So this is a great move right here. I mean, it's a three score, but I would prefer, uh, what is this, uh, CHFJPY. Let me just see something real quick. CHFJPY. Let me see. Give me one second. Okay. So it has a three score, and that's only because our currency strength is really not matching up with the arrow. Okay. So this one is a, is a somewhat risky trade. But as you can see, from this floor, price bounced up, hit the ceiling. Okay. Now that it's at the ceiling, a new candle has formed and, and what is it doing? It's, it's selling back down. So I don't want you to always wait that wait for price to hit this Bollinger Band here and hit the middle of the band here to take a trade. You'll probably be waiting forever. <laughs> you will probably be waiting forever, but what you wanna do is in between the market, you wanna find these little areas here where they have marked support areas and have marked areas of resistance, right? For you to sell down and take trades, okay? So number one is the arrow. The arrow uh, indicates a call or a put, okay? Arrow indicates a call or a put. Here we have a put, we have a red down arrow, okay? And then it's also at an area of resistance, okay? It's close to the Bollinger Band, but still, Cash Trap has created another area of resistance here for you to be able to take that sale, okay? So we have, we covered the arrows and we covered support and resistance, okay? Then the next thing is Bollinger Bands, which is pretty much similar to, um, like I said, Bollinger Bands indicates support and resistance, okay? Now, the fourth confirmation is currency strength. The fourth confirmation is currency strength. So how currency strength is, is broken down? Right now we're looking at CHFJPY, okay? Now it's saying that the market is going to sell. They're calling out a put right now, okay? But our currency strength is saying that CHF, the Swiss franc is, is a higher currency strength than JPY, okay? Now usually when that number up top is higher than the one on the bottom, that indicates a buy, okay? That indicates a buy. But that, that tells you why we have a put score of three. We don't have a very strong confirmation on this sale because guess what? It's saying that the market is selling, but our currency strength is saying something different, okay? So this is one that I will pass up on. I will go to another pair, find another trade alert to find something more accurate, okay? Now, overall, the market is buying up, but at this particular moment, it's trying to push down. It's trying to... Uh, reject off of that ceiling and push down, but it's not giving a strong enough um, push down for you to hop into this trade. If that makes sense. If that's making sense, drop some ones in the chat box if that's making sense. Okay, perfect. Okay, so when that top number is higher than the bottom number, that indicates that that currency pair is going to buy. Okay, now vice versa, I don't know why I switched off JPY. 
CHF JPY. Give me one second. Okay. Now, vice versa. If CHF had a currency of 13 and JPY had a currency of 38, then that will be a strong indication that the market is selling, that the market is dropping, that that particular pair is um, is selling in the, in the market. Okay. Then we probably would have a put score of four if that currency strength was lining up with the arrow. The first thing you want to look at when you take a trade, you want to make sure that that arrow and your currency strength is indicating the same exact thing. You want to make sure the arrow and the currency strength meter is indicating the same thing, okay? So I'm just going to switch to another pair and see if we have something that's accurately showing that, okay? So look, yeah, put score one. That's not saying anything um, for us when it comes to Euro CHF. Let's look at Euro GBP, okay? And Cash Trap has been a little funky today. So let, just, just give it a moment to do what it needs to do. It's still getting updated. All right, with the updates for 3.0. All right, give me one moment. We're going to find something. Um, and then with the market, just open it back up to you. The, the market has to to get itself together. All right, one second. We're going to find something. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully we find something that's that's uh, matching up with the... Um, okay, so here's one. Okay. Um, Eurocad is calling uh, for a call, which is a buy. Okay. And then our currency strength is also matching. It's 63 over 40. Okay. Now our call score is only two. So me personally, I wouldn't take this trade. But however, we have our arrow pointing upward, indicating a buy. And then our currency strength is also indicating a buy. Okay. So those are examples that you want to look for first, but also you want to make sure that your other confirmations, you want to make sure you have a minimum of four confirmations. So overall, this is a trade I would not take, right? Because I only have a call score of two and that's only indicating my arrow and it's indicating my currency strength. Okay. But we have other confirmations as well that we need to um, accommodate for before we take a trade and make sure that they're all lining up before we take a trade with cash trap, okay? So two is not enough. We have two, but those are the two major ones that you wanna look at, but two is not enough, okay? Now, also, if you look down here, it has a, a little area of a, a street area and it tells you um, it has S and Bs, okay? S means that this is an area of where the market, uh, where you can sell it. That's an area of resistance, a strong area of a resistance where you can sell. And the B indicates a strong area um, of support where you can buy, okay? Remember, we sell when the market is high and we buy when the market is low. We sell, we sell when the market is high, we get those bearish candles and we're gonna buy the market back up when it's low, okay? Now we have a couple other indicators here as well that we also need to pay attention to. And the best time to take these is when the market, uh, or the, the best way to read these is when the market is overbought or, over, or oversold. And that's gonna be um, your RSI, your stochastic, okay? So you have your, your RSI here, okay? So when it crosses this red line up top, that indicates an area where the market is, over, is overbought, okay? It's overbought. The market pushed all the way up. When the market pushes up, we buy. So this red line indicates an area where, indicates resistance. So if it pushes past that area, it indicates that the market is overbought, okay? So again, when a market is overbought, it has nowhere to go but where? Somebody unmute your line and tell me. Down. It has to go down, okay? So when the RSI is pointing downward, Okay, and then you got your other confirmations. You got an arrow pointing down. You got your currency strength showing you that the market is selling. You have the RSI, you have um, the RSI pointing down, and then you have the stochastic moving in the same direction. That is where you get your four point confirmations. And let's just say if you have an S that pops up right here, you have a five point confirmation. There you take the trade. Okay, there you take the trade. Now, as you can see here, I wouldn't take the trade if the market, if this 
stochastic and RSI had already moved and it's all the way down here, I would not be taking that. That wouldn't be a strong confirmation. I want to take it when it hits that area of it being overbought and it's just crossing down past that line, pushing downward, letting you know that the market is about to drop and do a major drop. Okay, so you want to pay attention to the RSI and the stochastic and where it's located. Okay, if it's moving straight across, we don't want to do that because it indicates that the market is consolidating. Consolidation is sideways movement. Okay, it's sideways, right? So this little movement in here, that's consolidation. Boom, and then we got a big breakout. Okay, this little movement in here is it's 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 short movements. Okay, but let me find a better example of consolidation. Consolidation is literally sideways movement where you're not getting any, you know, any drastic movement at all. Like, mm, I mean, you can catch anything in cash trap, but like this short move here, that's consolidation. That's consolidation. You're not really catching a big buy or sell. It's just moving sideways. And usually when you see that, you're going to see um, the RSI and the stochastic move in a straight line. Okay. But what you want to, when you take a trade, you want to make sure that RSI and stochastic is either pointing up from that oversold area or it's pointing down from the overbought area. Okay. You want to make sure it's pointing up from the oversold area and pointing down from the overbought area. Okay. If that is making sense, drop some fives in the chat box if that is making sense. Okay, perfect. Perfect, perfect. Now, when we're taking these trades, um, when we're taking trades from Cash Trap, you don't want to risk any more than 1% to 3% of your account, okay? You don't want to risk any more than 1% to 3% of your account. Now, the good thing about Cash Trap is so lit, it got, a, calendar, it got a, a calculator for you, okay? It has a calculator for you. So you can put in your, you know, account amounts, right? Um, you put in the, I think this is a percentage of how much you want to, is this a percent? Yeah. Yeah, it puts in your percentage of how much you want to risk, and then it calculates the dollar amount for you, okay? And it, cal it calculates the dollar amount. So with a, a $500 account, right? With the 500, oh, give me one second. With the $500 account, it's telling you in a dollar amount how much you should be risking, okay? Now, let's put that together with, let's put it together with your trading plan, okay? Let's put that together with your trading plan. So if you have a $500 account, we know you risk no more than 3% which is $15, okay? So then let's just say you wanna grow your account 5%, all right? Um, let's just put 30 in there, okay? Daily reinvest rate, let's just put 100. We're not, we're not gonna take anything out into 30 days. We don't trade the weekends, okay? We do not trade the weekends at all. When the market closes at four o'clock, you close your phone, your computer, your trading account, you close it up. Um, the only thing we trade on the weekend is crypto but we don't trade hfx on the weekend all right so now let me just scroll down to the actual trading plan the compound plan is your trading plan and why i say the compound plan is your trading plan is because 90 percent of the work is done on the platform 10 percent is you understanding the basics and inputting this information into your broker's account okay so um this is your trading plan you don't need to know anything really much of nothing but how much do i need to make for the day and how am I gonna break that up? That's all that you need to know. How much am I gonna make today? How much do I need to make today? And how do I break that up to make sure I am properly, uh, I'm using proper risk management and properly compounding my account, okay? So if you have a $500 account on each trade, you're risking no more than 3%, okay? So let's just say, you know, tomorrow's your first day trading, Friday, okay? And you need to make $25. You're not going to put in a trade amount of $25. You're not going to put in a trade amount on one simple trade at $25. That is not proper risk management, okay? Because you're risking 
how much did I put in here? 5%? You're risking 5% on one trade. Well, you're not supposed to be risking any more than 3% on one simple trade, okay? So you already X'd out to yourself as far as being disciplined, right? Which is one of the three pillars to success, okay? So if $25 is your trade, uh, your daily goal for tomorrow on Friday, we know that 3% of the $500 account is $15, okay? So when you hit a trade and you and you uh, and profit $15, then you should be only placing one more trade, right? To hit the $25 go. Or you might have to put two more trades depending on your trade amount, right? Because you can risk less than 3%, right? You can do anywhere between one to 3% you can risk, okay? So you want to break up those trades risking no more than one to three percent on one simple trade adding them up until you hit 25 dollars for the day if it takes you one session great if it takes you two sessions then do what you got to do but you don't want to go in over leveraging on one simple trade at 25 dollars okay is that making sense if that's making sense drop some sevens in the chat box if that makes sense okay because what's going to happen is you are going to over leverage and then you're going to keep dropping your trade amount. The trade amount is going to keep dropping and then you never even reach day 15. <laughs> okay. You never even uh, reach halfway through the month. All right. So that is, that's how you break down your trading plan. Just, you know, at a quick at a glance, that's how you break it down. All right. Now what you want to do is everybody wants to do this when you start your trading week. Okay. Next week. We starting completely fresh. We starting from ground zero. Whatever you have in your trading account, put that amount here. Okay, whatever you're growing your percentage for the day. Some people grow their their accounts three percent. Some people do five percent. Right. Some people even go up to eight percent. Whatever that percentage is, you put that here. Okay. Let's just put a thirty day limp term. Let's just look at us growing that in within thirty days. Now you can still withdraw before that. You can still withdraw before thirty days. But let's put thirty. Uh, reinvest rate put 100 which means that you're not going to take anything out okay until that that time period that you want to and then put no once you calculate that i want you to send yourself the results send my results put your email in so now what you do is you go ahead and print this off you print it off so that before you trade you're not scrambling okay what i need to make for the day okay now you already throwing off the you, you throwing off the whole mindset of it Okay, and most people come into it like that, rushing, um, not organized. And the first thing they're saying is, this don't work. No, it's you're not organized. Okay, so send these results to yourself, whatever it is, whatever your trade amount is, send it, send your results, print it off. Okay, print it off or save it on your computer, on your desktop, right? And have it so that you know, Monday, this is what I need to make. Tuesday, this is what I need to make. Now, we know that you're going to, you know, you're going to have some, some losses, okay? But then you just keep moving forward, okay? Like AB said, you're going to have those steps up, a couple steps back, and then you're going to have a leap forward. Then you're going to have a step back. Then you're going to leap forward again, and then a step back, okay? So make sure you send yourself the results so that you're not scrambling, so that you sit down after you've meditated on patience, consistency, and discipline, right? You can actually sit down and um and, and go into the trades with, with peace and you know hit those trades that the market is moving in the direction that we need it to move in and that we've analyzed it to move in all right now another thing that i do when it comes to cash trap when it comes to profit maximization um like i said these small areas of support and resistance right I, sometimes i'll sit on one pair and i'll play off of that <laughs> i will literally sometimes set off one pair and i'll wait for it to go up all right, once it hit a floor, I'll wait for it to pop up. Once it hit a ceiling, I'll wait for it to come down. This is this is on a five minute time frame. These candles rep represent five minutes. So if you can't be patient for 15 minutes, right? Five to 10 minutes for a setup, then this is definitely not gonna be for you, okay? But if you can be patient for five, 10, 15 minutes for a setup, right? and not bouncing around so that you don't get confused, you can really maximize off your profits um, when using this tool, 
okay? So even though we have a lot of trade ideas on this alert panel, okay? But you can stick with one pair. Let's just say you like EURUSD, okay? Or you like EURJPY, and you're gonna wait till EURJPY hits the ceiling, come down, hits the floor, go back up. And you can play off of that. You can literally play off of that. It was one time I was on the three minute bag and we missed our, um, we, 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 we lost the trade, but guess what? I pulled up cash trap and I saw that same trade while they were moving to another pair, I sat on that trade and I saw that trade come down and hit the floor, boom, and I took it right back up and got my money back. <laughs> so you can literally get your daily profits by doing that as well, okay? You can get your daily profits by doing that as well. So here is a four point right, right now that we're looking at. This is a great example of a, a great trade idea, okay? Euro JPY, we have our currency strength at 70. Um, that's higher than JPY, which is 27 which indicates that it's buying, okay? We have our green arrow pointing up, which indicates a buy, a call. And then we have our RSI and our stochastic also pointing up. Here you have it in the oversold area and it's pointing up, about to cross up, right? So we have four confirmations. Um, right here, I don't think this is uh, for right now, but we don't have a, a, a buying symbol right there, but we got four confirmations, right? We wanna look for four to five confirmations. We do at least have four. So that would be a good trade idea um, to actually take, right? And like I said, you can sit on Euro JPY and once it hits up to that ceiling, you can take it back down. You can literally take it back down. But that's an overview of Cash Trap family. That's an overview. I don't want to be too long. It's pretty much self-explanatory, especially when, you know, um, the educators have their favorite sessions and they have videos explaining how to properly use cash trap right and if you have trouble finding that let me just pull it up for you real quick so that you can find the videos but that's pretty much it but does anyone have any questions if, if i if i talk too fast let me know and i can go over something but does anyone have any questions about that so far and from anything that i went over feel free to unmute your line Hey, Shari, this is Terry. Hey. I was wondering, so when it hits either the ceiling or the floor, um, mm -hmm. at what point do you just, do you enter? Like, you know, um, are you waiting for it to, I mean, I guess you're waiting on that candle. <laughs> you're looking at one candle. So mm -hmm. like, at what point do you enter? Mm -hmm. So, you know, when it pops up less than a minute. So like when it hits like three minutes, I'm like, okay, that's too late for me to enter. So for me, it has to be two minutes or less within that candle for me to take the trade. Um, if it's over two minutes, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna wait for the next five minute candle. That that one just left me. You know, I really want to take it when it's less than a minute within a minute, just hit two minutes um, to enter in for that, um, before I enter in on that candle for that trade, for that three minute trade. Because you know it's a five minute candle, we go in on three minute trades. <clears throat> so I don't want to enter at three minutes and then it's only two minutes left in that trade. And then for the last for the last minute that I'm in a trade, a new trade idea has come out. And because it's HFX, it might be moving in a slightly different direction, if that makes sense. Yes, it makes sense. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now to, again, the educators, like the top educator on the platform, Matthew Thayer, like one of them, I should say, here, he breaks down the, the strategy. So if you didn't understand me, and which that's okay, some people have to hear it different from, from different people to fully understand it, you have the master. <laughs> you get Matt, Matty Pips, Matthew Thayer, the, the creator of the strategy here that comes on live uh, four days out of the week. He has a training session on Sunday, but guess what? You can go to his recorded sessions. If you happen to miss that, go to his sessions, go to his favorite sessions. And here he has an explanation breaking down cash trap. It's only 58 minutes long. He has a breakdown of cash trap, literally 58 minutes long, breaking down how he, um, how he reads the strategy and how to apply it, right? Taking that awareness, education to get the results, right? Same steps within IM Mastery Academy when we're breaking down a plan, right? Going from education, 
mentorship to duplication. You're getting the education, you're getting the, the mentorship, and then you're duplicating it. That's all that we're doing. And we tend to make it difficult, but it's, it's, it's right here in our face, right? But once you master those three pillars to success, con patience, consistency, and discipline, this will all make sense to you. If it's not making sense by now, it will all make sense to you once you, once you master those three. Last thing I wanna go over just really quickly to show you um, that cash trap, um, <clears throat> that cash trap quick start that I that I created for you all, that I dropped in the in the group chat. Right, if you look in, into the files, you'll see it says cash trap quick start. But those videos, you want to go and get those basic videos. That basic education is right here in your back office. Okay, right in IM Center. All right, you wanna click on um, academies. I haven't been back here in so long. <laughs> you wanna click on academies and then you wanna go to HFX Academy, okay? HFX Academy. Now, when you click on HFX Academy, it has um, some basic videos broken down to you. But in that quick start, you don't have to go through all of these videos. I broke it down in about seven videos for you to watch. And those videos are like five to seven minutes long. So you have a total basic education of about 35 minutes that breaks down cash trap, okay? And then we also have a basic breakdown of cash trap right in our 72 hour fast start. Also created by a top educator on the platform, Brandon Boyd, okay? He also has, and you have access to all of this, okay? Brandon Boyd also has a breakdown of cash trap right in the free 72 hour fast start, okay? So, you scroll down, keep scrolling down, boom. He got a video here that breaks down cash trap. It's a cash trap tutorial. Okay. So whoever, you know, whoever you can listen to that helps you understand it better. It may be Brandon Boyd. It may have been this call to clear up some things for you, right? Or you just might need to go to Matthew Thayer, the creator himself, and watch his video to break it down. So outside of you trading right getting up on a three minute bag at 9 a.m or hopping on with millie meals at 11 right you need to be diving in an hour of education every day and the more you do that along with earning because you, this is a platform where you earn while you learn because you're learning on on the the session but you're also earning but outside of that you still need to come back and get a better understanding you still need to come and take notes you still need to practice you still need to mark up your charts so that you can understand for yourself and become a self-sufficient trader, right? Over time, you need to know that. So that's when you need the hour of education, okay? Your hour today might be diving into that quick start that I sent, watching those 35 minute videos and then turning around watching this cash trap tutorial that Brandon Boy has laid out for you, okay? Or your hour just might be watching this 58 minute video that Matthew Thayer created. Okay, or whatever it may be. It might be another educator. It might be an hour long video from Taylor Marks, right? So don't make this hard. We just have to schedule and plan out and prioritize what we're doing. Okay, uh, when, I, when I worked, I worked from, from seven to four. And when I got home, it took me about an hour to get home. I eat something real quick and then I'm on my charts, right? And I'm studying. I knew that I had to, to go through a period of being overworked and underpaid so that I can be, you know, paid what I'm worth. I understood that I understood that I had to go through that. And that's the same thing that, you know, that's the mindset that we all have to go through is we have to put in a little bit of work um, with this. And in an hour is, is just really your 10%. So that's all that I have for you today. Um, if you have any questions, definitely drop them in the Telegram. Uh, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. 